recording. We got the audio. I started going. recording? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. And uh, it starts right here in three, two, one. Recently, we compared two superheroes, Dash and Super Guy and Kirby from Nintendo. In some ways, Kirby lost big. No big hair, no big muscles, no weapons, nothing. All Kirby's got is appetite. Kirby's Dreamland, the thrilling adventure game on Game Boy. Kirby munches, spits back, and floats, saving glorious Dreamland. He's Kirby, and he packs a mean bite. Kirby's Dreamland, only on Game Boy. Yeah! Yeah! Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Play Retro. I'm your host, Scott Johnson, and even though I say Kirby sucks, I mean it in the best way possible. Aw, and I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I think this little pink dude has an eating problem. Hey, hey, stop copying me. Stop it, you little pink god. Yeah, he is a pink god. He's a god. He can do whatever he wants. This world is his to do as he pleases. Do Wiggle, with po, po, as he pleases is what I mean. He can suck you yeah. in, and then he hits down, and then he takes on whatever powers you had. That's just the way it is, F-balls. So get used to it. Kirby, <laughs> he's here to stay. We're going to talk about Kirby today. I'm excited about this. Uh, yeah. Very, Retro actually. Kirby, baby. Big Kirby fan, uh, playing three games right now from different generations. I'll talk about those uh, a little bit later. Before we get to any of this Kirby talk, a couple of quick things. I got my Steam Deck running all the emulation stuff. All of it. Oh, see, that's the only reason why I even want one. Not even, not even hard. Not even. It was the easiest freaking thing I think I've ever done with with this sort of thing. It was so simple that it's almost like I feel like I cheated. It's like I go, you go, you literally go into desktop mode on your deck, which is built into the functionality of the thing. That's not some hackery thing. You can run the thing in desktop mode, and it just runs like a Linux desktop. And um, you go and load up your ROMs. You run this little thing I got at EM, emudeck.com, which I talked about a little bit last week. It's just a little installer. It does everything for you. Um, you can get crazy about settings if you want, but you really don't need to. And once it's done, uh, you're done. In fact, you just hop back over to, to, uh, to Steam Deck mode or game mode, they call it. So you're out of desktop, back into game mode. And you go to Steam and you just download like Emulation Station or in any number of other front ends that you can use. And it just worked. Like it just worked. I played. It was great. They're all on an SS or excuse me, an SD card in there. If I want, I can have it on the main drive. I have some games in there. I need to move them around. But point is, it's just all right there. And that's where I, I, I played two of my three Kirby games this week. Is on that Ooh. thing. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am curious. How do you get the ROMs? on to the device do you plug it in through a usb do you pull the sd card out copy the files over what's the what's the you go-to can, move but here's what i did I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what i did i took my roms and i put them on um a private uh uh drop box link for myself okay and so okay. i drop box that to myself or basically I put them in a drop box then i copied the link to that folder made uh made a frogpants.com slash i won't say what um, that basically is a page with just a link to that page, right? So right. all I had to do was when you go in there, the default browser in the desktop mode is Firefox. I run that. I go to that link, just put it in, boop, I'm there. And hit the link, downloads it, go to downloads, unzip them. That's it. Simple oh, as that. Just like that. Yeah. Now the, you could do it the, the other cloud. way. You could do it other ways. You could do, you know, like you said, the SD card and then pull it back if you want. If you could do, you can hook up, a, you know, a USB little hub or something and, and then right. network it all over there. You could do it over Wi-Fi via some other protocol. Um, there's plenty of Linux ways of sending stuff back and forth. So there's lots of ways to do it. I just found that to be the fastest and easiest. Okay, thing. okay. So there's different ways to do it. That's good yeah. to know. That's that's excellent to know. Actually, I had I had someone. Uh, I actually had uh, in, in, uh, Eric on Twitter offer me uh, their spot in line on uh, getting the getting the Steam Deck, but it was I I looked around and I was I was a little bit nervous to pull the trigger. Um, on that because of the way some people was like, yeah, it's no problem. So what? You just you know, but you have to log into their account. And Eric was super cool. It was like, do it. It doesn't matter. And I oh, was like, oh, you have to yeah, log into their. They can't transfer issues. it. That's interesting. I thought maybe they could yeah. move it around. I guess you can't do that. 
I yeah, you can't move around uh, the the uh, the initial purchase. Mm. Uh, once you get the once you get it, you can attach to any account you want to. Yeah. Uh, but the the I think the initial purchase has to be done through the Steam account that was done that way. And I I looked around and some people were like, sure, no problem. And other people were like, giant problem. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to run into a giant problem. So I'm like. I guess I'll just wait. I'll for wait. some reason. But Eric was awesome for offering that. I thought you could transfer it to another Steam user like a gift. I thought you could do that. I, I, I seen some people say the same thing. They thought they could do it. And then other people said, nope. And I'm like, okay, mm. why not? And so other people was like, well, you just cancel it. And then the next person can get it. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not the next person in line. So yeah. that's not going to do me no good. Sure. And so, yeah, there was a lot of discussion about it. I'm sure people... We'll come back and play retro show at gmail.com and tell yeah. me how I, you fool, you should have done this. And I'll be like, too late. I've already missed my chance. Well, he's still got it reserved, right? He's not. I think until the 28th or something. So if, if you're hearing this after this, yeah, it's too late, buddy. It's yeah. too late. It might be, e well, anyway, we'll see what happens. I really want you to get one of these. I'm so impressed with it. I played I modern excited. stuff, old stuff, stuff in the middle, things I haven't touched in 10 years. It's kind of become my favorite little little booger to play with. Oh, please, um, somebody capture that. My little booger. I like in, to play with boogers. Yeah, you hadn't touched yeah. it in 10 years, and <laughs> got to play with your little booger. All right. Yeah. <laughs> got to get that booger out. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's that. I wanted to also give a quick shout out. I cannot remember if I thanked him publicly last week or not, so I'm going to do it even if I did it twice. I don't care because that's that's how nice he is. I just wanted to once again thanks, thank Jim out there, who I know is in thank the chat you, room right now. Dude, uh, for my birthday, dropped off, he lives here locally, dropped off a PlayStation 3 unboxed PS3, just waiting to be open and used. And uh, yeah. that was really nice of him because I no longer have my PS3. He sold that forever ago. I don't remember who. And right, right, um, right. I regretted it because I just, I, 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 it was about that time where I stopped selling my consoles every time it would roll into a new generation. Yeah. And I just regret ever selling any of them. Like, I, I just hate right. that I ever did. Um, so I wish I'd have kept them. Now I got a PS3 to hang on to. That's awesome. He's awesome. Thank you, Jim. For I got some PS3 news coming too, but we won't have that until next week. Oh. And I'll talk about it. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Fancy. All right. Tell me what you did this week. You're probably messing around with stuff. What's going on? Oh, yeah, actually, absolutely. Uh, quickly, I want to follow up last week. We talked about the legacy of Kane. And if you didn't see that or listen to that yet, you should go back and listen to it. It's a great episode. It's not going to be as you want to watch. You go through this one first. Go through the Kirby. This, Yeah, do that. But do anyway, yeah. legacy of Kane. I picked up all of the I picked up all of the legacy of Kane series games, except for Soul Reaver, who has been pulled that one has been pulled from the Steam store as well as uh, uh, the good old game store. And so I ended up having to get it uh, through. Uh, that's right. We talked about that because they were going to do, they were going to re-release it or they said, stay tuned for news. And then they never said right. anything. They just and they languished. never did anything. Yeah. So Lame. I actually went to, uh, I, I went directly to the source and I bought it um, from is Square Enix, right? Is that right? Is that yeah. Right? That's the publisher. Yeah. It's curious. Yeah. I went to Square Enix's website directly and said, how about now? And they said, yeah, we'll sell it to you. And they give you a Steam game code. Really? So I just I just bought it from them, six ninety nine. Went over to Wait Steam, a minute. activated activated it, and so I got Soul Reaver on my Steam now. Why did like, they like do that in the first place? That's so weird to me. Like if they're going to take it off the curious. store, but they're going to sell it to you and then give you a Steam code to go right back to Steam and install it. That's I, so weird. I was curious about that. I was like, was there some kind of so to me, it feels a little bit dirty. It feels like they're trying to squeeze uh, Steam out of their cut. I don't know. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but it felt a little bit weird. So I don't know if there's like some kind of legality or something that they're trying to wrestle with. And it's like it's just easier to do it like this. But I don't appreciate. We'll get back to you soon. And then still sell it on your website. I don't appreciate that. No, Makes I don't either. I think that's like you're doing something weird. I think they are doing something weird. I don't trust that. Right. That's bad behavior. Square Enix, stop that's, doing that kind of thing. It's a, it's at least weird behavior. But I another thing. Mm. So, oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Did you oh, get a Retron Five? Oh, I have a Retron Five. I had oh. a Retron Five forever. Oh, I forgot you had. Okay, I saw this. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to I'm going to tell you about that too. But that's going to lead into the Kirby discussion because okay. it actually has something to do with Kirby. Oh, but uh, Jeremy Jeremy uh, Salentis had 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 sent me something to take a look at, and I'm going to see if we cannot get this to working. But it's a 32x. <gasps> Shut up, dude. 
Yeah. Did you have so to hold gonna, something we're together? Take a look is it falling on, my, on is it, mine and see if we can't get that puppy running? Is it falling and, apart uh, or something? You're holding it weird. No, it, oh. it's not. Uh, it's it's just not. Um, it's just not loading up the games from what I understand. But it just came in, so I can't I can't tell you exactly what all is going to be. You know oh, the issue. So you got to go for the we're going to check it out. Full tower, baby. This is what I want. Full tower, baby. I got to get that. I got to get that CD, that Sega CD too, that I yep. so I can stack it that way as well. Yes. Oh, uh, why did I sell all that stuff? I should have kept it. I know. I this, sh- that's what makes it retro, man. You you sold it, you have regrets, and now you want it back. And the three DX or sorry, what is that called? What did they Which make? Which were the thirty two X? That's what I want. Thirty two X. Yeah, thirty two. Not thirty two X. No, what was the th- the little CD player portable one that had a CD? Oh yeah, yeah, the CD. Yes, yeah, it's the CD. CDX. Uh, the, the Sega CD. Was it a CDX? I think it was a CDX. Oh, I forget now. It's, maybe Every, everybody was putting. X's I thought it was just called the Sega CD. <laughs> no, it's the it's the one that's the portable. That's what I always call it. And it was the it's the size of a like a walk like a disc man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it it puts it fits right alongside the model two. It looks it looks just like the model no, two. No, not right? that. You're still thinking of the you're still thinking of the, the C D player, the model two C D. Oh. I'm talking okay. like here, I'm gonna find it. It's gonna drive me. No, crazy. you find it. You go find Sega. it. While you're doing that, I am gonna talk just real quick about our um I ordered my first Famicom disc, and we, you said, hey, Brian, you got a Retro, Retron 5? I do. Retron 5 allows you to play, uh, it says five game systems, but it's actually more than that because it allows me to play uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. It allows me to play, uh, oh, there it is. Oh, okay, the CDX. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That yeah, thing. the CDX is yeah. this one that's like, I mean, there's a cartridge in the back, but you put Genesis cartridges in there. This thing opens up oh, like a yeah. clamshell for CDs. Uh, I, I think it only had two player ports, but it also yeah. did a bunch of music stuff. Anyway, I had one of those. It was expensive. I forgot about that thing. Four hundred dollars or something. Yeah, and you I got sold suckered, it. sucker. Oh, did so you have sad. that land stalker in it? No, no, I did not. That is not my <laughs> copy. But that was the thing I was thinking of. Sorry, go ahead. Show me that again. Right. What do you got oh, there? Oh yeah, in your yeah, hand? yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got, I got, uh, I got, I got the Kirby. This is my first uh, Super Famicom game. Nice. Um, I ordered this off eBay. Uh, it is uh, it is the Super Deluxe Kirby, which was the what we called um, what was it Super? Uh, it wasn't called Super Deluxe. It was called Superstar. Super so in America, Star. we called this Superstar, yeah. which was the eight mode Kirby game. Uh, but I plugged this right into my Retron Five and launched it and played it. Nope, just kidding. I plugged it in a hundred times before it finally <laughs> before it finally recognized the ROM. Uh, so, but that I knew that was kind of an issue. Because that slot in the Retron Five yeah. is is uh, you know it's a little finicky. It's sure. a little finicky. Sure. Um, but I finally got to see firsthand um, the the region locking that is the Super Famicom. You know, I've read a little about it, but I've never actually seen why you can't stick a you know a uh, a Super Famicom cartridge into a SNES, and it really is a physical block. There is a there is a there is a physical bit of this cartridge that actually stops it from being able to go into the slot. So yeah. I was like, okay, so that, now I understand. That was the their region. way of keeping things region, yeah. you know, region locked and all that. Or one other yeah. way of doing it, I guess. Yeah. And I, um, I, I read about it and I knew that we, I couldn't, but I was always curious about, oh, how does that actually work? And now I, I've seen it. I've seen it myself firsthand. That thing looks more likely to plug into a freaking Genesis by the look of it. Like the it, shape of it. It, it is very close to a Genesis size uh, shape. It's yeah. probably more of a Genesis shape, but yeah, yeah it's uh, it, uh, but it's it's bigger. Yeah. It's bigger. It's yeah. almost about as wide as an NES cart would yeah. be, but about you know not that tall, but like more like the height of a Sega Genesis. Yeah. So it's and pretty cool. I want to get a Super Famicom proper, and um, the only reason why I got this one is I knew I had an English. Uh, version of it that I could reference because you know all all the instructions are in Japanese. Yeah. Um, but the uh, but a lot of it is actually you can tell us in English like a lot of things like Kirby's name and you know like the uh, the different uh, the bad guy names all that stuff that's all it using uh, you know what's the word it's not you know you got the Japanese character language but then you got the Japanese language. In well, there's no name for Kirby in characters. Japan. It's just Cur- it's Kirby it's everywhere. Twinkle, it's Twinkle Po Po Po. Yeah, Twinkle Po Po Po. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was the one. His original name, right? <laughs> but my point is, like, yeah, you'll see all kinds of localization well, that could- includes, you know, uh, you know, f- even full j- Japanese. You're gonna have some stuff in there that's like, oh, well, that's the that the reason it's the American yeah. word is they don't have a word for it otherwise. 
and right. uh, or some other word. I don't mean American. It could be English or anything else. Um, however, uh, usually that means you can get around it and kind of guess at what menus are. Right. But some games way too complicated. You're like, oh crap! I don't know yeah. what to do uh, next. Not Kirby. Yeah, <laughs> not Kirby. Kirby is uh, uh, what do you call him? Twinkle Toes Po Po Po. What is it? Oh, he's uh, he's Twinkle Po Po Po. <laughs> I think it was originally yeah, because he's it's it's uh, the actual title of this this uh, this game actually is uh, uh, Hoshi. Is it now? I'm for, now I'm forgetting. Hoshi no is it Hoshi no Hoshi no Kirby uh super deluxe which you can tell that last part is written in english it just says super yep. deluxe yep so i think yeah. super was always one of those well, words because it's super it's the it was always one of those words though i don't think they have a japanese word for it or if they do they don't use it in all the video game stuff so right it's right. weird very weird well worry not everybody because kirby's right around the corner after i play this <laughs> Shall we play a game? Yeah, I think we should play a game. A game, a little game called Kirby Po Po Po. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> twinkle, 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 po, po, po. twinkle, Po Po Po. All right, the first game that uh, happened in the series, surprisingly enough, the origins of this game or this series, as venerable as it is, and as many as there has been since, was the good old fashioned black and white freaking Game Boy. I thought Kirby started. was older than 1992's uh, Game Boy. I really did. I was thinking he was like like mid 80s well, i thought 87 if i was gonna guess with yeah. a gun to my head i would have said 87 88 maybe um yeah right. it is a little surprising 92 feels much later in the in the uh in the timeline than i expected he is for lack of a better way of describing it the main protagonist of nintendo's kirby series and uh like we just said made that debut in 1992 the game was called kirby's dreamland here in the states and the series has been running for three decades, over 30 titles since then with yeah. his name on it. They've had no trouble thinking of places to put Kirby. Yeah, Kirby gets around. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Kirby gets around. <laughs> uh, most of these developed by HAL Laboratories, but occasionally you see somebody other, somebody else doing development work or co-development work. Um, he's he's still a giant jerk in the uh, the Smash Brothers games. He's OP. Yeah, it's uh, it's it it is funny. We'll we'll kind of hit some of this, but I don't think it's any secret. On the surface, uh, Kirby looks like a very simple, basic, happy-go-lucky character. But if you really dig into the Kirby lore, and how can you not? Yeah, it's, there's a little bit of question of how you know how good Kirby really is. Yeah, there's not only that, but he's he's cute and but weird enough that it's discordant. It's like kind of hard to get your head around what Kirby right. really is and why he's involved. What is your yeah, what is your motivation here, my friend? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know the backstory. We know that you're on planet Star Pop yeah. or whatever it is, it hanging out in Dreamland and King G Giant King Penguin DDD came <laughs> along and you know, and is stealing everybody's snacks and yeah. just quite upset your little pink bottom. We know, yeah. but there's there's more to the story than that. I I just feel it. Yeah, he's a poo poo head. Um, his newest game, uh, The Forgotten Land, is amazing and uh, yeah. also creepy. It's it's like cute and adorable and all the things you're used to with Kirby. Obviously, glorious modern looking 3D, uh, but yeah. the world itself looks like Mad Max came in there and you know took a dump. <laughs> so now, how <clears throat> Laboratories is known for doing that kind of cute, creepy thing, like with Earthbound. Yeah, that's also it on the surface looks like you know. You, here's your cuteness yeah. just kidding yeah. it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah yeah you're not wrong earthbound's a really good example actually and it's a yeah. bummer that that yeah. thing took so long to get into the hands of uh or i guess the earthbound was here but we didn't get two right the second I think that's one right i yeah. think you are correct they never came to america or at least hadn't before but i think it's now on the online switch thing i think you can play it anyway Ooh, that's interesting see i've been meaning to go back and visit the online uh, switch since they've been adding so much stuff lately and I just haven't went back and done it yet oh yeah I go in there all the time in fact there's versions great versions of the Kirby games for the NES and Super NES uh, I don't know about the N64 I don't know if that version's on there that's one of the least good Kirby so I'm I'm fine if right. it's not least. Um, we'll talk about that but here's some sound from that original Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy very jolly very jaunty oh yeah Smash with gameplay here. You know, there's something about Game Boy sounds. Even 
even more than the other 8-bit consoles at the time that I love the sound yeah. of a Game Boy. I think that's why everybody always collects like 500 Game Boys and makes a giant like musical thing out of it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, there's something it's about a little it. Bit, it's a little bit saccharine for my taste uh, in, in this one. Now, I'm not saying this bad. I'm just saying that it was sometimes... Sometimes I feel like the music was overpowering everything else, and man, that's a weird complaint to have, but it just felt like I couldn't hear the cool Kirby suck noise. I like hearing Kirby. You like hearing you know, Kirby that... suck, yeah. No, I get you. Yeah. Uh, in this game, he, um, things are a lot more basic. Uh, you didn't quite have the breadth of abilities and things that he would get in later iterations of the game, uh, mm-hmm. which is fine, you know, whatever. You couldn't they even get a... copy. You I was a... shocked. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You I could, was shocked. Yeah, not in the not in the. I mean, it's too early, dude. They don't know what they're doing yet. Yeah, they. <laughs> they were just trying to be Kirby like. Kirby didn't know. No, he, he didn't, didn't know. know and they were just like, something. you know what? We're trying to make a cute kind of platformer. Mario's got a certain thing going. We're gonna try to do yeah. something different than that. And 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 they did that. I think they succeeded in doing that. The Game Boy game is pretty hard. I played a bunch of it this week. It's hard. Oh, yeah. Really? More difficult I, than usual. I thought it was. I thought it was easy. Really? I, okay. Okay. Let me, let me, okay. So here's a point of contention between many Kirby people. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, I, I think that the, to, to complete the game is easy, but if you actually want to do what, you know, if like, like modern gamers think it's like, Oh, well, I don't want to get hit here, here at all. We learned that in the Mega Man series. It's like, I don't like getting hit at all, but it's impossible not to get hit in Mega Man. It's kind of the same here with Kirby too, but it doesn't feel like there's much of a penalty for getting hit. It no. feels like uh, that's yeah. true. That's true. You have a lot yeah. more. There's no one hits like. Uh, well, I mean, what does Mario do? Mario eats a mushroom, and now you're two hit. Uh, yeah. But yeah. in the case of of Kirby, you've got a, a life bar, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six not- notches on it. Every hit will take you down right. a notch. I just felt like the Game Boy game was a little less forgiving than future installments of the game, including the NES game that was just about to come after that, right. um, which I love. Oh, my gosh, I love that game. We'll talk about yeah. why I love that game, but I love that Oh, I, I'm i sure we will, but, it, but we're still on the green screen machine, man. Yeah, and by the way, even Dreamland. back then, he lived in a dome-shaped home in Dreamland on a country yeah. on his home planet called Planet Popstar. Planet Popstar, because he was Twinkle Popopo. Yeah, yeah, that's he real dumb. Uh, real dumb. That's, uh, now you got to remember, some of this was designed. Uh, okay, most of it was designed by. Uh, I'm going to say his name wrong, but Masahiro Sakurai. I think you did really and good. Why do I? Why do I feel like I have to do with the accent? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> no, it sounded good. You sounded like you nailed it. Right. Nicely done. Well, I've heard him. I've heard a lot of people say it, but I I know I didn't say it right. But anyway, uh, he was only 19 at the time when he was uh, when he was tasked. With uh, coming up with uh, Nintendo put out the call and said, hey, we're looking for a a game that's accessible uh, to all gamers, you know, grandma, kids, you know, it it has to be a little bit challenged. But most of all, it's got to be playable by anybody. It's got to be cute. It's got to be fun. fun, And he delivered. Yeah, he delivered. uh, He he delivered. But, you know, with by committee, too. He didn't do it all by himself. But, you know, he was the primary pusher of all. Still pretty impressive, though. 19 years old. Yeah, 19 years old, man. I know plenty of uh, brought, 19 year olds that couldn't do this. Yeah. Took, brought to Hal Laboratories, uh, who was in major financial trouble at the time and was switching leadership, uh, to, brought those guys out of the hole. They yeah. were uh, they were suffering until then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, French, mm-hmm. French fried taters. Mm hmm. French fried taters. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, yeah, Kirby's awesome. Now, things would get a little more colorful in 1993, only a year later. Right. And we got some sweet six bit color and uh, oh. the copy ability happened. That's also cool. Yes. Um, and it got that, you know, that big tree was in the the mobile one too, but or not the mobile one, the freaking one of my tracks. Yeah. Well, it was mobile. But, I mean, I mean, it, it is mobile, Boy, but, but yeah. mo- mobile in the a big different sa- sense. Um, this <laughs> the big is where. The tree that, that was all like, oh, boo hoo. Now, this is the one where things <laughs> yeah. got, for me, the most interesting. And yeah. there's, there's a long story to this game that we're not even going to get to yet. But this is the one that really started it. Um, it's an incredible game. Yeah. Here's some sound. Listen to that. Now that's Kirby. That's Kirby to me. That's great Kirby music. I freaking love that, dude. Yeah. Jaunty, good time right there. 
Anyway, Kirby's, uh, this adventure is a little bit more grand, obviously. We're in full color now. We got the power of the NES, whatever that, you know, whatever you want to take that as, uh, sort of back in the thing. And uh, this also is, to me, where all the gameplay really started to shine. Like, what is this game going to be about? What is this going to feel like for forever? Like, Kirby has felt like this since then, for for yeah. For, yeah. for the most part. I'm going to say the N64 game had trouble. You know, what trouble we'll get to in a minute, but I... I think this game is like a high watermark. It will actually get beat down the road, mm-hmm. but it'll get beat by an exact trans not exact, a translation of this game into a remastered form. Right. Uh that would end up on the Game Boy Advance with a t- different slightly different title and it's that is the best Kirby game ever made. Straight up. It's so good. I I I wasn't sure because uh, okay, so my experience with Kirby was I played Kirby, but I wasn't a big Kirby fan, I would usually hop on. And my first experience, also, I believe, was with the was the Kirby Adventure on the NES. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking, "Oh, this is kind of cool," but I got bored pretty quick, probably because I was thinking in my head, "This is going to be like Mario. This is going to be a Mario, you know, platformer." And I was like, "What am I doing right now? Sucking stuff up?" And I don't understand what's going on here. Young Brian was like, eh, "I'm out." Yeah, but uh, but I, I th- th- this going back, yeah, I was like, "Wow, I really missed out." How did this person win? How did this person on screen just win two in the stupid claw machine? I've done the that. Little bonus games. You got to do I've, that. That's good. You can do that. I suck at it. How did you? How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I just I got it. I didn't think that part was very hard, but I I, I that feel was, you. I never could do it. I couldn't even get one. I feel you. But uh, one of the mechanics of the game was. <laughs> Eat a dude and then push down. What did yeah. that dude do? It gave you the dude's powers. So yeah. if he's a little fire you chucking guy or if it's like a little guy with like a sword or whatever his abilities are, suddenly Kirby has some form of that ability and it's amazing. Uh, right. Sometimes you'll find a favorite. It's like, well, I really like this one where, I don't know, the guy throws bombs. Now I can throw bombs. Uh, there's there, And you may want to try to hang on to it forever. Problem is, you get dinged or hit by one of these creatures, and yeah. you'll you'll poop out the ability, and you have a limited yeah. amount of yeah. time to go eat it again. Um, but and it you makes gotta, you work and you got to chase it, and yeah. every time I try to chase it, I end up floating away, and I lose it. But I, you know, I can't even work the crane machine. So what? what do I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. It's hard. That part is tricky, um, and I like that though because it just it just made you think a lot about your strategic choices and stuff. Uh, this game still plays extremely well on the NES. Um, it's lacking in some ways, like you know, animation frames and stuff like that. Most of that gets addressed in the in the remaster or the remake that they made for the GBA, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. But that's really the one to seek out. That remaster is so freaking good. Oh my I, gosh! I did find it fascinating because they were uh, this was this was late in the NES uh, lifespan here. So this is 1993. Yeah. So. Yeah, so this is one of the later games to come out on it, and I was kind of shocked because I noticed when I was playing, and this was, and we and we double checked this across a couple of different ROMs, the me and the community, um, and it seemed that even the one on the online on on the uh, on the Switch service is uh, it, it it has like uh, like almost screen tearing. I mean, when you're, it's not, it's not rendering everything on the edges if you look at it. Matter yeah, fact, but these, you can video. see it here too. It's it's the game just did that like. Yeah, NES. because they were trying to do probably beyond what the NES was, you know, they were at late, late life. Yeah, it the was very like, late uh, life. When we run into this sometimes with the games we cover, it's like, wow, this was really late yeah. in life. And the truth is, the Kirby games have always been stuck toward, if not right at the end, near the end. Like even yeah, the new the one, up. even yeah. the new one came out, what, late 2021? Yeah. And the Switch came out in 2017. We waited that long. Like, it's they're still doing it. They still make... Kirby does... Kirby does clean up. So yeah. you, you put your Mario up front and then uh, Kirby's in the back running a little defense for you. Yeah, that's He's what like, you I do. got you. Yeah, and it's fine. You. I'm okay with it. I'll, I'll wait for Kirby games. I don't have a problem with it. Brian told me pre-show. I didn't even know about it, but there's some racing Kirby minigame looking thing coming out this summer or soon. Yeah. I didn't even know like about if it. You, if, you, <laughs> if you can't catch a mainline Kirby, don't worry. Wait a month. Yeah. They'll have a puzzle game that'll uh, that'll that'll cover you. Well, let me let's get to some of that. Um, the NES was fine, but then along came the Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, and that sounded that like this. System. 
So as you can tell, a little better soundtrack. Looks like we're, you know, we're getting into the the era of, hey, this can sound good and look good. It's a new console, 16-bit graphics. Let's go. And then it's the worst game ever. Now, you're not going to agree with me. Brian thinks <laughs> this is the best game ever. He likes Superstar oh. uh, Kirby Superstar. I don't. I think Kirby, Kirby Superstar. We forgot to man- mention Kirby's Dream Land 2. There's a sequel for the Super Game Boy and the and the Game Boy. Should have mentioned that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it, it is a, it's a shame to not talk more about it. But, yeah, Kirby's Dream Land is, uh, I, I think... It's pretty just, awesome. It's I, really good, but it's just like more of the same, yeah. though, right? Like it's more of the same, except except for the fact that it's it's like the Kirby's Dream Land one, but this time you can have color if you had the Super Game Boy, which is a, an adapter you can plug into your uh, SDS and then plug in your cartridge and it has a color palette, and it looks really good. And we can't just pass over the fact that it introduces the pet mechanic, such as Rick the hamster. Yeah. <laughs> that blew my mind. And I was like, I'm all in, Kirby. Yeah. Kirby's Sign great. me up. Now, but back to Kirby Superstar yeah. for the SNES 1996. Garbage game. Dude. Garbage game. Not a garbage game, Worst man. Game. It's eight. It's bad. Eight games in one. No, it does. there's no value in that. You think there is, but I promise you there isn't. That game is just a bunch of mini games. What if I told you there was a Metroidvania with Kirby right in the middle of this? Sort of. It's real weak sauce, that thing. I'm not saying it's terrible. I'm just going to say it's of all the Kirby games, it's the one that is the most disappointing. Because they're just kind of, it's a gimmick. The whole thing is a gimmick. Everything about that game. I spent more time playing this one than any of the others. And maybe because there's eight games. But the Great Cave Offensive? Man, what a different tone completely is that it is is the music is more somber everything just changes there's there's the milky way wishes game there's oh my god you get to you get to you get to have the gourmet race i mean you get to race well i can tell you what i can tell you what this is though this is them saying hey where are those eight other uh prototypes we never pulled the trigger on because they weren't good (laughs) enough to be their own game oh i know let's put them all into one and call it a game that's what they did well i I personally, I like I said, I think, I think it's one of the most. If you just went, hey, which of these carts do I want? I'm gonna say this is one of the best, most varied selection, and it introduced, uh, it introduced the power hats, which finally, I'm like, that is, that was so cool for me because I needed that visual representation. I needed Kirby to change visually when he got one of those power hats, so that I could go, oh. Now I'm now I'm RPGing. Yeah. Now I feel like something's happening. Yeah, I mean Let's there's stuff there. You're not wrong about. It. I mean there are glimpses of brilliance in it. Two two player. Yeah, big deal. Who cares? <laughs> Kirby's not meant for multiplayer unless you're, you're racing. You're not. You're not wrong because there's going to be a thing I'm going to say about uh, uh, the about the two player yeah. that I hated. But yeah. we'll. But it's funny because I think that's the one that you say is the. One. Oh, the best and one I by said, far. Or is, is that the one, the one I wait a minute? Maybe that's not the one I'm thinking No, of. that's not the one you're thinking of. But we're gonna that's get we'll get of. to the one that's the best. Yeah. Uh so there is a bunch of spin-offs as well. We didn't really mention them. I do want to mention at least one here. Kirby Pinball is yeah. so good. That's Scott's Game, wheelhouse right there. Game Boy the Pinball. Game Boy and NES. For some reason, this thing is not letting me play it. Oh yeah, you, you just totally lost it. But the, I I the curry pinball had that uh had that gyroscope in it, right? Had the what, gyroscope, that's what we call it. It's a gyro gyro the giraffe. No, that wasn't the one, was it? That, well, that was the Tilton. That, that was, was the, the Tilton tumble. Yeah, that's not it. Uh yeah, that's not it. I can't freaking remember now. But basically Kirby Pinball was a very in- innovative <laughs> uh pinball game. I think that those Pokemon pinball games that came later uh right. were directly inspired by it. It's one that you can sit and play forever. It's very good. Well, it's um, a no-brainer. Kirby's a Kirby's a ball, right? I mean, yeah, he's, he's a ball. big, he's a gumball. Yep. I mean, he's a ball. A gumball Any guy. games that have a ball in it as a character yeah. or anything, and that you play like the Pokemon, it always have a Pokeball. Right. Of course, that's what you're going to do. You're going to yeah. hit him. You're going to hit him with flippers eventually, and treat him like a pinball. That's the rule. And they Miyamoto did. Miyamoto wanted Miyamoto wanted wanted him to be yellow because apparently Hayes Namco and doesn't want to. Uh, it doesn't want to confuse anybody with Pac-Man. Whatever. Oh, that's Miyamoto. Funny. Yeah, it's pink. Is that true? Do you say it was because of Pac-Man, or you just, you just no? He that? didn't say that, but Miyamoto did want him to be yellow. Huh. Um, yeah, I wonder and, why. Uh, Pink's yeah. fine. He's good. Pink. Look pink is great, but maybe uh, not. Maybe they were afraid it wouldn't be masculine enough or something. But I don't know why, because it, all this stuff is just you know, good, good candy goodness. 
Yeah. Give yeah. me the good, good candy. Give me the good, Goodness. good candy. Come on. Right, exactly. All I want is the good candy. What do you want? Right. And, of course, the Americans, we all thought he was just white. We thought he was a ghost. <laughs> Did we? Is that what we thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, The uh, the Dreamland, uh, Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy, when it was released, uh, the cover art, because, you know, the Americans, we got to choose. We got to choose the marketing angle. Yeah. Because, you know, we know America better. So we, That's true. we was like, yeah, he's white. And it's like, why? Because the screen is... Because the screen's black and color. white. Yeah. Technically, <laughs> he's green. Not, it's green. Yeah, I was going to say, he's more green than white. Right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, whatever. It's Your your mileage may vary. And if you don't like games that are pinball games based on a mainline series, you you know, you may not like it. But I love the I didn't. Game. I didn't play it, but I was curious... Um, I was trying to remember. Did so it was for the, it was for the Game Boy original, yeah, right? It wasn't Game for Boy. the color. It came out. It came out for the Game Boy or not Game Boy Color. That came out for the uh, the NES as well. There's a version for the NES, right? And it's very good on there as well. Full color. I feel like I need. I feel like I need bumper buttons to play a pinball game, though. I just. I feel like I it mean, would need to be on the SNES. So here's I could what you got to do. Little... Here's what you got to do. So a lot of those games, including Pokemon Pinball, they didn't even use. Right. They didn't even use the the bumpers. They used they, B and, B and the. Uh, d-pad left button what? and once you get used to that it's fine you just go bing 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 bing, bing. it's no problem no, no i promise you it works <laughs> i swear it does now you can remap them to this on you know if you're going to emulate it or whatever but back in the yeah. day this was fine yeah, there's, no, was there's fine. no key remapping back in the day I, it, it cracks me up every time i go into one of these old games and it says options and i'm like oh options yeah and it's like would you like mono or stereo Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Your emulator has to <laughs> d- to do the switching, but if you if you yeah. really had to do that, you could you could remap those to your shoulders in a modern way. However, uh, it's not only fine. I think it I think it works hundred percent. Like the only the only when I play pinball games on a phone, I should right. hate it, but I actually really like it because it's almost one of the only touchscreen uh, activities I enjoy because it's just it's bumpers, it's flippers. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Beep 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 yeah. beep beep. So Brian. <laughs> Get yourself used to it. Beep, 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 beep. I'm sorry, I said BMNA. So your two far right and far left buttons, which happen to be a D pad and happen to be a B button, those are your buttons. Okay, okay. Oh, that, that makes more sense. Yeah. I can see that. Piece of cake. Okay. Nothing, nothing doing. It's really easy. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that now. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at my controller now. I, I can see that. The other one is Kirby's Dream Course. I just wanted to give a little nod to. It's a golf, kind of a mini golf game. And of course, Kirby's a ball. Kirby's a ball, exactly. (laughs) So you're knocking Kirby around. It's actually really, really good. One of the better sort of golf light types uh, games that that showed up on the system at the time. That was an an SNES game. And that, by the way, is also on the online Switch service. So you can play that one just right now if you want to. In fact, a lot of these we talked about so far are on there. The Game Boy stuff isn't, but the NES games, the Super NES games, and maybe the N64 game is there. I don't know. The Dream Ooh, Course is great. Be. It should I, be. They, they're pretty proud of those Kirby games. I think the the uh, Super NES Classic had two Kirby titles on it, so mm-hmm. I was pretty excited to see that. Yeah, it had course, a superstar. Yeah, and they, of course, made their own little ripoff of Poyo Poyo. Sort of. Everybody was doing that then, though. Yeah. You yeah. know, you got to, oh, hey. Mean, mean Bean, yeah. Wicked Machine. You had your Mean yeah. Bean Machine. You had your Pac-Man one, Pack Attack, whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. You had uh, the Street Fighter thing. Um, everybody was trying to make a, you know, a dent in the puzzle market with their big IPs yeah. and Kirby had his, had his time as well. Oh yeah. Now let's talk about the important one. <laughs> Not this garbage superstars, eight game freaking gimmick nightmare. All right. You're wrong. It's, it's the best. Le- <laughs> well, okay. It's not the best. It's like, it's my s- s- second or third. It's yeah. not my top three. Okay. Really? Three. That's insane to me. Top three. But, but now, okay. that that this is this this just includes the retro Kirby. It doesn't include anything else, which is up to Kirby and Amazing Mirror on the Game Boy Advance in 2004. That was as far as I had research time for. Well, how do you feel about one of the greatest ones ever released for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System called Kirby's Dreamland 3? That sucks. That's the worst one yet. Bull poopy. <laughs> That was the worst one. It's not the worst. That's a good game. There's nothing wrong with this game. I mean, it's it's not that different than the the early NES games other than graphics and stuff, but it's, you know, it's a very good people love this game. What do you you are the crack smoker of the day. I and I I felt that. I felt that I was the crack smoker on this and I I just don't think I had enough time to really appreciate it, but I I did not like how uh, I okay, so 
the, you you've talked about the two player games. Yeah. This game really shines with two players. So disagree. Much so disagree. Keep going. So much so that uh, the, just a simple a simple press of the I think either the A or the B button uh, brings up your blob GUI. Oh my God, the blob GUI blob that is gooey. the <laughs> spinoff of the Void and is is a is a Dorcas. He's a he's a he's a cross eyed weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you start out with him fishing, right? Yeah. And he's like. He's eating the raw mackerel. Yeah. He's he's a weirdo. <laughs> now, uh, now, what you do is, I accidentally kept choosing him, and yeah. since if if you're two players, Gooey's cool because the other person can control Gooey. But if you accidentally freaking get that turd launched while you're playing by yourself, oh my god, he's such a pain in the butt. He's in the way constantly. I'm like, get out of the way, you stupid blob Gooey. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, Stop messing me up. I mean, I admit. It can be that way, and they also have these other helpers right now. We're watching that that raccoon bird thing. No, now those are helpers. They those, are. I like they helpers. Are. They're okay. Gooey, Gooey is like the he's like the he's like Scrappy Doo. <laughs> he's he's I terrible. Can't, I can't deny that he is kind of Scrappy Doo. I, I hate you. him. I feel you. No, no, no. That's a <laughs> that's a fair point. I don't think you can make it the worst Kirby game though. It can make it one of the worst characters in Kirby history. Sure. <laughs> Okay. And there are a few okay. of those. That D D D D D D D guy can eat a chode. D -D 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 yeah, he sucks. D -D -D -D. He's a turd. Not a fan. Yeah. Uh, he's, but not anyway. even, he's not even a top level tier boss after a while. Which, especially once you get to this, you're like you start getting into the into the void storyline, and you know things get really serious with these eyeball void looking things that are following you everywhere. This was the most nefarious of all of them. Oh yeah, it's for the, sure. It's the, yeah. For sure. And on the face of it, it's got kind of a painterly look. Everything's meant to look a yeah, little bit like I, watercolor I do or like something. I like that watercolor painterly look. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh, there's that damn tree again. Always. It had pits. And that tree is he's just the it's, I feel bad. I really this is what made me feel like I was the bad guy. After I killed this tree like for the fifth time, I'm like, maybe I'm the bad guy. <laughs> if it was you. It was <laughs> you the whole me. time, man. <laughs> yeah, that tree is always pissed. Uh, he's in every Kirby game that I can remember. And uh, yeah. you're always having he's a always kill like him. the first boss. Yeah, he's a real pud. Um and yeah. kind of hard too. He's not the not the I mean, once you learn his I, patterns, I, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. He's he's super at first he's like very intimidating because he's much bigger. He takes up the whole screen. Uh, but then once you discover, it's like, oh, I just need to stand here. And it's like, oh, I just beat that stupid tree. And now he's crying sap again. Okay. Yep. I am the bad guy. Yep. Yeah. You, you're the one that uh, the police really should take and put away. Now, uh, I don't know why this person is using using the owl when I'm everybody knows you need to have Rick the hamster. That's just. Yeah. Rick the hamster is the choice. You're right. If you ask sure your average he can Kirby. fly, but I mean, <laughs> Rick the hamster, you're riding like Yoshi. You're like Mario riding Yoshi. They're, they're, they're peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And that blast thing he does is awesome. That, uh, yeah. That yell blast thing or whatever it is, like shockwave. Yeah. So this is a good game. This game rocks. People should play it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's some other spinoffs on the SNES. For example, Kirby's Star Stacker. By the way, uh, Dream Course was also on the Super Nintendo as well. But you had Kirby Star yeah. Stacker, Kirby Super Star Stacker, Kirby Tilt and Tumble, and Kirby Air Ride. Yeah. Uh, T Tilt and Tumble uh, had gyroscope, but what was that from? Yeah, yeah. Was that it had a, a gyroscope? Yeah, you you plugged. It was in the cart. It was built into the cart, so it had like a, that cart is like a really weird size. The only one I didn't really get to. Uh, to take a look at because I was like, ah. Eh, oh, it's a GBA it's, game it, then, right? GBA game. Yeah, yeah, it was a GBA oh, game. Okay, right, yeah, right. Yeah. I yeah. like, I, I'm like, it can't be SNES because the cart wouldn't matter. It's sitting, you'd have to right. pick up the console and move it. You have to hold your console. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. I forgot. They had a few of those, a few games like that, including the pinball game had, yeah. well, they didn't have tilt, but it had um, uh, force feedback. So when you would yeah. hit the flippers or whatever, the cartridge would shake and buzz and whatever. Yeah. They were always trying to do gimmicks like that. And I, I but I think that that's one of the ones I want to physically have because I, I don't think emulation will really give me the the sense of what I'm looking for. No, no somebody I would did, somebody would have to emulate that part of it in some way or something. Yeah, know? and you probably could, no problem, if you use something like the Switch because the Switch has those in the controller. And then maybe what the PS4 has that in it yeah. as well, the yeah. controller. And like, did the PS3 have that in it as PS3 well? PS3 had Rumble, yeah. Oh, no, wait, you yeah. know what? Remember that was controversial. The they had the they had the rotation stuff. They had, a, they had stuff in the controller for, um, what was that called? Six Axis, they called it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the controller itself did, 
at least initially, maybe later it did. It, right. Maybe it got it back, but there was like lawsuits about who owned the rights to. Oh yeah. To that. Do you remember right. that? I forgot about oh, all that. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was weird. I've been in retro land so long. I totally forgot. I'm like Kirby. It's like, like Sony didn't want to pay the royalties for this copyright. And I think Nintendo's the one yeah. that got the money for that or something. <laughs> that's weird. I, I can't love it. remember. It was some weird thing. It. That whole, I think that's still a thing. If you're going to have forced feedback yeah. in your controller, you have to pay for it. Unless you do your own patented technology. Right. That doesn't rip the, it off. Well, that's only because uh, Nintendo's lawyer Kirby uh, is uh, <laughs> that's yeah. the story, right? That's the story Miyamoto likes to tell yeah. about uh, about Kirby. And you know, I've read it in a million different places. But I got to be honest with you, I love Miyamoto, but he will he will lean into a good uh, story. Oh yeah. So like yeah, I've I've read a lot of interviews with him. You know, and it does seem like it's like oh, it's not necessarily true, and it's not really important. It's, but, a, it's know, apocryphal. A it's, an, story. it's an apocryphal, apocryphal story that yeah. that because he's in a fantastic business where it's all about fantasy, it works somehow right. to keep telling that yeah. damn story. And so a lot of people say, "Yeah, that's a de facto answer." Then when they ask uh, Sakura, 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 why, why am I samurai? What's Sakura. his name? Sakura. <laughs> Sakura, Sakura, <laughs> Sakura. There you go. Why can't I say Sakura, Sakura? Sakura. <laughs> See, I'm having trouble. Yeah. I'm having trouble. But I meant to send you that link uh, because if you if you ask Siri uh, about uh, Mas- Masahiro uh, Sakura, yeah. it will uh, it'll it'll think you said uh, uh, um, mashed potato samurai. Let me find that out. I'm gonna say it. What is it? Yeah, tell me I, I'll again. send you the link in Discord. Oh, do you? Okay, let's do that. Yeah, I'll send you the link in Discord. But right. uh, oh, wait a minute. There's, okay, there we go. But yeah, anyway, yeah, he he said he couldn't remember. Uh, yeah. Sakurai said he couldn't he couldn't remember what the 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 you know the the starting point for what. But you know it's it's the Kirby vacuum cleaner. You know they just put it as a placeholder, <laughs> just like they did with Kirby. They were just like, yeah. oh, we need a character, and you know when they they just made a little cute pink blob, and then they end up keeping it. Same thing with the name. I can almost bet. I don't know that for a fact. It just feels right. So oh. Brian's rewriting history. Look, I now see what you mean by, okay, now I understand this because this is the link you sent me. I'm going to try this live on the air, okay? So here we go. Right. I'm going to say, so what do I say? Ask Siri, who made Kirby? Okay, here we go. Siri, who made Kirby? Masahiro Sakurai created Kirby. Oh, poop. It's Must fixed have fixed now. It. That was in 2018, so I guess they got shamed. Yeah, they Nintendo fixed it. Nintendo Life reported on it back in 2018, so. Because this is what it says, <laughs> Mashed Potato Samurai created Kirby, and then they don't call him by his real name, but they got his Mashed Potato Samurai <laughs> link in here. That's really f- freaking funny, but they fixed it. I would love that. No, oh, boo, boo, fixing things. Look at the Leave search. Did broken. you see what the search did? But down no, below, if you that. keep going, the Google search... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that guy's him. <laughs> Chat, you gotta see this. this is... Oh yeah, the guy, the, the first guy. Yeah, the first not guy. Him, yeah. There's no way know, in hell that's him. Yeah. That's the hero Sakurai is kind of uh, he's kind of he's kind of like a rock star, right? He looks like he could be doing some K-pop or something. Oh, he's yeah. got you know he's got the pop collar and everything. He's very he's very hip and cool and yeah, he's got to be in yeah. his late forties by now, right? Something yeah, like yeah. That. He's got to be older now. Not much younger than me. Is J-pop a thing? Uh, J pop. I know there's K pop, which is Korean stuff, but I did, I wasn't well, sure. No, J pop like, was J pop was first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the term, I mean, and then later you got your 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 K pop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's still a thing, as far as I know. Right, but K pop uh, is so popular right now; it's on the top. After that, you get okay. I'm going to tell you the worst thing ever made. You ready? No, do it. Well, I already did. It's Kirby Superstar <laughs> from '96, but the second worst. <laughs> Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. They should call that now, the Crystal see, Shards. They should call it. Me and you are on, we're on the same page now. So the Kirby 64 <laughs> or the Crystal Shards, the Crystal Shards. It's bad. 2000. What a waste of 3D. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was still, it was still, you know, side scrolling essentially with a little, you know, a little parallaxing maybe and a little, ro- a little bit of rotation, but you know, pretty much just side scroller. Yeah. Why even bother? I mean, it Why sounded good. Listen to this. Yeah, good sound, jaunty music. Let's hear some gameplay. Obviously, a full throated sound work on that. Um, it's a jump in the right direction in all other ways, except for the fact that this looks like a game where they went, Yeah, 3D's weird and hard. We don't know what we're doing yet. 
So we'll just kind yeah. of work our way through this and sort of fake it. That's how it feels to me. It, I, the I only, don't like you know, this game. Whereas, right. Now, where other Kirby's had kind of each iteration, the main storyline was always trying to bring something, you know, several things that were new. They only brought one new thing here. And as far as I know, uh, it, it was the combined powers. So you could like, if you sucked up something, you know, you could actually suck up two things at yeah. once. Yeah. And uh, you could make something uh, from that, like a, like a third power. Which I thought was was pretty cool, but they they never did that again later on, which I thought was a shame. I yeah. thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, there's there's moments like that that are fine. Someone in the chat says it's the best Kirby. I think this will the the answer to yeah, this one depends on system. when I can agree. when you played it and how old you were. I really do think that right. makes a difference here. So if you were like you know junior high kid playing Kirby for the first time, this is your first Kirby, you probably lost your mind. You thought this was so great, and I don't want to take that away from you people. Okay, but yeah. in retrospect, mm, rough. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. I did. I did play it, and it felt like a. Now, once again, it's 3D was hard. We were just getting into it, but it did feel like a step back. I'm not saying it's the worst Kirby game. I'm just saying. Me neither. That, uh, I give that to Superstar. Whatever it is. I disagree. I still think. <laughs> I still can't stand that stupid gooey guy. That gooey guy ruined everything. Yeah, the gooey guy. Uh, well, no, the gooey guy's not in. Um, he's not in Superstar, is he? Or is he? No, no, in Dreamland. Oh, no, Dreamland's awesome. Quit saying Dreamland's bad. Three, you're, Dreamland 3. No, yeah. no, I said Dreamland 3. Yeah, Dreamland 3 is great. You, you're you the worst for saying it's bad. Worst Kirby is Kirby bad. Superstar with eight games. No, no. Yeah. That's the best. No. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, it's, it's like it's like the second or third best. Because we're about to talk about... It's the, the next ones are going to, kind of the ones I think are the yeah. best. Yeah, and I'm going to... So, so, you know, God bless you, Kirby 64, but you just didn't cut it. But I'll tell you yeah. what did cut it. The best Kirby ever made. Here's some sound. Now, you hear this and go, wait, that sounds like everything, that's, Scott. It sounds like the same that's shit. Good. It sounds like the same thing you've been playing the whole time. Well, let me no, tell you good. what I'm actually playing here. I am playing sound from Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland from the GBA. And you might say, oh, is that, a, is that a new game? No. It's a remake of Dreamland, the original. No, it's the remake of the adventure. I'm That's sorry, adventure. I, I always do that wrong. Adventure. Yeah, I do the same thing. I do it every time. I don't know why. This had four player support, though I never used it because uh, you got to, you know, link up Game Boys. Um, right. Beautiful 32 bit graphics. Mm, and the reason you'll notice that is the animation frames per second, all that kind of stuff, like animation in each character and dude you fight and all that other stuff. So much more advanced than even the SNES would have done. Yeah. And. So what they did is they took the best playing Kirby, original adventure, Kirby, and they mm -hmm. made it even better because it was like, at the time, massive uh, upgrade in both graphics, audio, quality in general. Speed this of is, gameplay. Uh, oh, the gameplay was so good. Yeah. So good. This is the game. It came out in 2002, uh, and it's beautiful. And I've been playing this one. I'm pretty far in it, actually. I've been playing the hell out of this game. Yeah, and I'm and it's a revisit for me because I used to have it, and I think it is wonderful, and wins today's competition for best Kirby game. Ever. I will say it is definitely top two. What would you put at yeah. number? Well, have we hit I, one yet? I, or what? if if I could if I could go if I could complete the games, I could make a definite call. But it's definitely going to be one of the Game Boy games. It's either going to be Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, which you just talked about in 2002, or the 2004 Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's a real tight. It was a tough call. I had to complete both of them to be able to really call it in in my personal take. You know what uh, part of it is I, for really the reason I think Adventure and, and the, uh, the Nightmare in Dreamland remake of Adventure? You know what I think it is about those that I love so much? Give it. It's do the level, take on a tiny mini boss, not a big deal, solve a puzzle or two, and then get mm -hmm. out. And you're in overworld again yeah. where you got doors. Okay, where do I want to go yeah. now? Do I want to go right to level yeah. three or I go to this bonus level where I got to get to choose a thing? I like that kind of loop. So it's not yeah. just level, 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 level. It's level and then back out to where I'm picking doors and decide where to go next. There's something about that I love. Yeah, there's something about being able to drop out to like this overworld area where you can pick from eight different wonderful games that uh, really makes it stand out. Yes, I, I agree with that. Now, I will agree Kirby with you, Superstar. though. 
I will, I will agree with you that uh, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror is very, very good. Um, yeah, it's almost Kirby gets split into four, right? And yeah. they're, they're kind of like they're not pets, but they're like companions, and it's is just uh is it, it i just like the the tempo of it and just everything looks great and is just, just it pisses me off well. though because it kind of feels like you're cheating you you call in one of your buddies if you're if you're screwing you up you get to call him on a cell phone it's yeah. my favorite it's like <laughs> i need to call for help i love that yeah it's okay i can play this by myself or i can call a friend yeah but the friend is who wants to be it. and they're just ai if if you don't have yeah. four game boys so you're just you know, yeah. whatever but I think it's a delightful game. It's number... It's probably tied for second with the Super NES game that you don't like. Right. Um, so I don't know why... Our, again, yeah. Maybe if I got completely all the way through Kirby's Dream Land 3, I could say. But w once again, we've picked this... Like Kirby, we've picked this massive sandwich of game. And, uh, and I was only able to get through so much of it and just like like i said after playing all the other kirby's uh the, the dreamland 3 was one of the last ones i played and it just fell flat for me it just didn't it didn't sparkle and shine like some of the other ones i had played so i don't know you should buy no. that new one it's good it's really good give your switch a, a, a happy meal it's an excellent <laughs> game it really is it's something special i think that game's awesome when the, when the end of the or I guess they already had awards that it would have been up for, but if they do right. awards and it hasn't been considered yet, it ought to be considered. It's 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 a gameplay first kind of romp uh, right. that looks amazing, feels great, is true to the well, spirit of Kirby, and also weird like Kirby. It's just great. Wonderful I need game. I need Rockstar to make me a game like Kid Kirby. That's what I need. Oh, you mean like a like a like a GTA style Kirby game? Did you do you did you ever hear about this story? No. Uh, apparently, uh, before Rockstar was Rockstar, uh, they were still what DMA, I believe. Yeah. Is it what, what yeah. And so they were actually working on one called Kid Kirby. It's one of the canceled uh, games. And uh, yeah, I would have been excited to see a little more, uh, a little more uh, adultish Kirby. Unless you have already, unless you read the uh, the German Kirby manga, which you know you already know what adult Kirby looks like. I did not, but now I don't want to know about that. Is that really a thing? <laughs> Yeah, so there was, uh, so you know, Nintendo Power. There was a website, uh, where, where, uh, I guess the magazine too, but Nintendo Power DE, the German Kirby manga, uh, where Kirby is uh, kind of like an old uh, film noir uh, kind of detective. And uh, he's known to sit at his, his desk and look at uh, dirty magazines. Okay. And, uh, you know, yeah. just basically be a, a big giant orange... Uh, bad guy. That's what he does? <laughs> okay, I uh, you know and, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't search. And, uh, by the way, don't search for uh, Kirby Dirty Magazine Edition, or even just if you don't, just don't unsafe <laughs> search for Kirby. Uh, right. You, Actually, you're that's gonna... hilarious because I think that's what the first thing it told me whenever I searched that. It, it told me the same thing. It said, "It said warning. Yeah. You don't have safe search turned on. Yeah, you if might you want to." You somehow think Kirby's immune to Rule Thirty Four? Right. Uh, uh, no. 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 And my favorite part of the German Kirby manga, where it's just like this adultish themes and you know sexy women and, and that kind of stuff, and you know Kirby smoking it up and doing all that kind of stuff. My favorite part is I'm assuming it was the editor or maybe the cartoonist uh, in an online interview. Claude M. Moise uh, said that he didn't like Masahiro Sakurai all too much for unexplained reasons. Uh, running this and reportedly a few others was more or less his way of getting back at him by turning Kirby into a freak. Wow. Why didn't he not like him, Yelp do you it. say? Why he didn't like him? I don't know. Maybe he was a little punk. You know, <laughs> how old would he have been? I mean, by two, by around 2000 or so, you know, he was 19 and 92. So what, he's still, he's still in his 20s. You think he might have gotten a little too far up his own butt and was thinking he was pretty awesome and pop, you know, better than everybody else? Is that what's going on? I don't know. And the Germans are know. like, no, we don't have this. I know at one time we were all allies, not today. Yeah. That's terrible. World War II. It's I love it. Too soon. Uh, anyway, Too soon. there you go. That's the run. That's all of them. Now, they're, like we said, there have been games since. There's some amazing stuff on the DS. Uh, there are incredible games on the 3DS. 
and uh, the Wii U had a fantastic game. Nothing wrong with any of those Kirby games. We just knew if we wanted to do all 300 of them, we were going to kill ourselves. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of Kirby. Yeah, it's a lot of Kirby. And I'm telling you, we've mentioned the ones you really need to get here. These are the core games that are going to matter the most, you're going to have the most fun with. And look, if you got to go back to NES and play Kirby's Adventure, play it there, that's fine. Highly recommend playing that GBA remake, though. It's much better. Yeah, now, I tell you, we we've talked about it on the show, and I think we kind of I think we've had a reawakening here, or some kind of awakening that me and Scott have realized that wow, we knew Game Boy games advanced, Game Boy game advanced games were fun, but yeah, they really hold up. They hold I mean, up way more than you think. Up. More better than their their big console brethren. Like the yeah. the the Game Boy is. I don't know what I, I don't know why I feel this way now. I loved it at the time, and especially my SP. But I I just always saw it as oh, this is Nintendo's current. Um, yeah. you know, handheld console, and that's fine, and you get whatever you get out of it. But in retrospect, and playing them now, they're some of the most fun I'm having. Like, yeah, straight up. Yeah. And, and if I can find a version for the GBA, I prefer that over one of the others because it has a better aspect ratio. Um, mm -hmm. they're newer. They have better. That's a better processor, better sound, all that stuff. So, yeah, man. Like the other comparison it here is um, uh, Super Mario Advance Four. Which right. is Super Mario Brothers three on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but buffed up like they did with Kirby, like all new graphics and stuff. If you already thought Super Mario Brothers three was like the best Mario game, and a lot of people do, this version is so good. It's so yeah. much better than just the base. And I know if you're like trying to be a like a, I only play the original in its most original form. I understand. I get it. Okay. I get you. But I, I love these the remasters. Hardest. I mean, they didn't call them remasters yeah. at the time, but I really, I really like no. them. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, and I, I think yeah. I like the Game Boy Advance because it was, it was, it was still, you know, early 2000s for, for a lot of these games, uh, mid 2000s. And we were, we were about to head into DS territory where everybody felt like they meet, needed to make use of that stylus. For a really long time, it felt like every game had to have a stylus gimmick, and I'm like, yeah. I don't want this. You're 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 straying. They were you're pulling. Straying. They were trying too hard. Nintendo does this thing. Okay, there's ways that they keep their stuff from getting pirated and goofed around with, and right. one of them is they introduce a bunch of gimmicks that nobody can reproduce very well. Yeah, and the DS is a great example of this, but it's certainly true of other consoles they've had. Um, you need it, two screens, and it needs to have touch in it. Yeah, and or motion luck. control or whatever. Like, it's got to have these things that are difficult to duplicate. And right. the problem with that is sometimes you do that at the expense of possible fun. And the only example I will use where I think it actually worked in their favor was that Kirby... Oh, path thing where yeah, you draw his path. That's a fun game. Really like good. But it's a one-shot, never-going-to-be-like-that-again game, right? Like, that's it only right. exists because that's what the DS did. And 3D on 3DS, yeah, same thing, right? At least that one you could kind of ignore. Uh, I wish they wouldn't do that. I wish Nintendo would just quit. Okay. Sometimes their gimmicks work. Like, you know, first Brumble Pack of all time. First Analog Stick. Yeah. Or no, were they the first Analog Stick? No. Yeah, the, yes. I, yes, yes, N64. The, with the N64. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it may not have been like... I mean, I'm trying to remember if that was, Saturn thing came yeah, out. Yeah, I'm that. trying to think if there was any other that might have been third party or maybe late in uh, development of any other. But yeah, I, I think that was pretty much the first mainstream console to have. Yeah, that, and that stuff that stuck, stick. right? Like it yeah. held. And so I'm not saying that they don't innovate in those ways, but oftentimes they'll innovate, you know, one innovation, but two weird missteps with. Well, you got to have the special hardware. You got to have the thing that mm -hmm. you can't do in the other area. You got to have two screens. Like, you know, whatever. It's worked for them, and I and they're probably not complaining, but I always found it to be, like, a little bit self... Um, yeah. Uh, you're, you, you are, you're setting yourself on fire a little bit for the future. Yeah. Which they've shown they don't, you know, they don't like emulation. They don't like preservation. They're kind of jerks about it. Um, what? Yeah. Nintendo, man. What are you going to do? Nintendo man. Love hate. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, where can you play this right now? Where can you play games like it? Well, as we mentioned, the uh, Switch sub thing, Switch Network Online, whatever the hell it's called, uh, has all the important Kirby games of the era on there. Okay, so right. you want to get back to the eight bit and sixteen bit days? You can do it there. Although Pinball's not on there, which is really lame. Oh, yeah, because uh, it's a Game Boy game, so they don't put it on there. Um, 
the uh what else uh oh and then of course the new game forgotten lands is i've said it before i'll say it again and one of my favorite games of last year i love it you should play that game including you brian you should play that game i'm on it okay get on that uh anything else you want to hit with kirby you got anything else you want to uh, i mean it's just uh yeah i've always found it fascinating and this was just one other little aspect i've always found it fascinating how angry kirby looked on the box art of everything i'd ever seen of kirby but then when you get into the game you're like where is the angry kirby i don't see the attitude but definitely in the marketing so yeah we just did in north america it seems like we always had uh all all the characters had to have attitude mm-hmm. like angry you know angry brows with lowered rah, kirby that was the, the 90s man all had x's in it i'm surprised they didn't call it kirby x over here you know yeah oh, that would have been great would it no <laughs> <laughs> no it would not oh look at this cool animated hand i'm telling you yeah this game you can't see this at home uh people listening but yeah. look at all his little friends he's, on the he phone. he's calling in. he's calling his buddies it's like oh crap I'm, I'm going against the hands and it's funny because super smash brothers yeah all this stuff is is it all starts getting tied in together oh yeah and i know we mentioned it but i'll say it again he's op in that game and he should be removed from the roster he's too good well my man he made both he decides he makes the choices yeah they let him make the sakurai uh, mashed potato samurai mate got to make the choices (laughs) mashed potato samurai is responsible for all of nintendo's greatest mistakes just kidding not really he's a good guy (laughs) good luck to him all right that is it for Kirby. Kirby is awesome. Go play it. Let's go play a game of our own, though, called Guess Our Game. Destroy it. <laughs> this is where Brian's we bring audio a- clips and we try to find out what the hell each other is saying with these games. Or what's saying? What, what, what game they brought? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Brian, I'm going to start with mine. Are you ready for your hint? Yeah, as soon as I finish guessing what game I put in your house, go go ahead. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. All right, good. Uh, You'll write that down one of these weeks. You'll just write it down somewhere. Well, I'm always afraid to put it in the notes. I'm afraid Scott will see it. You got to tattoo it on your your arm. My inner thigh. Your inner thigh. Ooh. Uh, (laughs) All right, here's mine. You're probably not going to get this, but I kind of hope you do because you like the character involved. Let's put it that way. The year is 1995. Is it it gooey? It's not gooey. (laughs) 95, the console is the Sega Genesis. I would probably proffer to say this was also on the Super Nintendo, but I don't actually know that. So okay. I'm going to play the Genesis version. Enjoy. I like this. Music is all over the place. Yeah, it jumps all over the place pretty early. Here's the part that'll probably be closer to what you think. Yeah. This sounds familiar. Huh. Any guesses? No. It sounds familiar, but I, I I can't get a visual on it. I the audio sounds familiar though. Let's say that you Sega Genesis, nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Is it a is it is it a property based on a TV film or anything like that? I'm or glad you it, asked. I'll give you that. Like, that's a good hint. I'll give you the hint that this is based on a comic strip character. Oh. And you're a comic strip guy. You like that stuff. Yeah. And it's not Garfield. It is. It is Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> is it Garfield? It is Garfield <laughs> caught in the act. Caught in oh the act. Oh my god. Yeah. That is hilarious. I had this oh game. My god. I don't think I paid for it. I think my somebody bought it. I don't remember why I had yeah. it. It's not a good game. I, I played it against it. It's today. not a good game. And I, I remember having this game as well, but I still I still can't. It was Garfield. What was it again? Garfield. Garf, Garfield uh caught in the act. It's called. Caught in the act. That's right. Caught in the act. Yes. Yeah. It's not a very good side scroller uh thing. I don't recommend it. But it definitely sounded like that Halloween kind of music that they always do. Yep. Oh, for sure. And he never spoke, by the way. That's the other thing is they didn't use any voice because it's Genesis and no one did that back then. But yeah, uh, it's unfortunate. Kirby didn't speak either. No, that's true. Kirby never said anything. Although I think he makes sounds now that's like uh, 
not like Mario, but kind of like, like I can't explain it. Baby, I'm a, I'm a star. Something like that. <laughs> All right, Brian, I'm going to play yours. Uh, the year is 1994? Three. Uh, 93, 90, 93. Now I'm making sure because I think it was, yes. Okay, so guess what, Scott? Yeah. 1993, Sega Genesis also based on what was originally a comic. No way. Okay, yeah. that's crazy you picked that. Here we go. What the frick is going on? Based on a comic, how old of a comic? Uh, was it 20s, 30s? When did when was that comic? It was old. It's an old comic. Is this a Popeye game? No. Good guess though. Not Popeye. Um, it's not Popeye. Not Popeye. Popeye. It's not the other cat. It's not Heathcliff. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on. It can't be. It can't be a serious character because listen to this. Originally, uh, originally uh, was in the comics in 1938. Went on to be a TV show and later a movie. Really? Shit. Um, give me, give me one more hint. When right, did the movie think, come uh, out? Then, that'll that'll help me. Tell me when the movie came out. Uh, the movie would have come out. The one of the movies, since it was many movies. Uh, I think it came out in ninety two, I believe. Ninety two or ninety one. Yeah. Okay. 91 was the year the film came out. 91? Mm hmm. I've. I think we've done this on Film Sack. It's not Ghostbusters. Nope. That would have been 89 anyway. Or 90. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I, I Sometimes can't... we do this show on Wednesday, my dudes. Wednesday? We do it on Wednesday? It's not. This isn't some Adams Family thing, is it? Of course it is. Oh, jeez! Didn't I do Adams Family on the show before? I thought I did. I don't think you did this one. I think you did the uh, was it Family Values or something? You did uh, a different one. I must have, but that's what was holding me back. Is in my head, I'm like, well, it can't yeah. be that because I've already done it. I didn't play this. Did you play this? I played it only in emulation. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. This I is... never had this on the Genesis. All right. Do you have any in the chat? Get or... it? I believe they did. I oh, believe. Uh, bad Poor see. got it. I think... yeah. yeah, yeah. Bad well Poor got it. So yeah, we did. Sounds like Adam's family. Nicely done. Well, there you go. Yeah. Brian, one point. Me, zero today. Congratulations, me. Now this. Welcome to the Treasure Room. Email time. That's right. Terry J wrote in to playretroshow at gmail.com. Says, hi, Scott and Brian as well. Or hi, I'm sorry. Hi, Brian and Scott, too, is the way it reads. Scott, too, uh, as well. Don't know if you are familiar with Odd Tinkering on YouTube, ODD Tinkering. Okay. Uh, he restores tons of old gaming systems, uh, but today he posted a video of a PlayStation he bought for about five bucks, restored it, and then upgraded Ooh. it in order to play games from an SD card. Thought you'd appreciate the retro restoration and the upgrade work that he, that he did. Love the podcast. Only podcast that I watch on YouTube regularly and religiously, oh. and I don't even play video games that much, which is strange. I know I am obsessed, or I am an obsessed listener back from the App Slappy days, and this podcast gives me all those same feels. Thanks for being awesome. See you on Twitch when I can. Terry J. Yeah, Terry J. I do uh, watch Odd Tur Tinkering. It's, it's kind of like this. He, I, I, all the ones I've ever seen, he never narrates anything. I don't know if he does other ones as well, but he always just is, is just all you can hear is him, that, that you, you know, manipulating the plastic, you know, unscrewing screws, and mm -hmm. you get to watch him tear down stuff and and clean them. I like I like the cleaning ones probably the most, but because um, this, oh yeah, this, this, is this PlayStation is PlayStation ugly, one. man. Look at that, it's dirty, yeah. and yellow, and oof. oh, like it's someone so smoked. satisfying. Probably people it's that so smoked, sad, right? right? Probably smoked around that thing. Is that what's going on? That's always the question. It's like, but I, I think, I, I think it just has to do with the mixture and the plastic and where it was stored at more than anything. I don't necessarily know that 
for a fact, but I've seen some people talk about it because when you retrobrite some things, um, sometimes it will return uh, to that yellowing uh, eventually. So it's just according to how brittle the plastic is and what it was exposed to and that kind of stuff. So I'm look at that. He restored it and threw the parallel port in the back. Yes. He's that's the reason why it. they pulled that parallel port. That's we was funny. all haxing through it. Yeah, that's cool. A little SD card in there. I'm impressed. Yep. That's awesome. Brian, you I actually should have do one that. of those on the way that that one of the I have one of those on the way. That thing on the back? The, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But okay. we'll see. It might take a minute. It's coming from China. All right. <laughs> well, Terry, I had no idea. This is a cool channel. I'm going to check this out. Uh, if you want to be like Terry, send us an email. You can play retro show at gmail.com. Good news, everybody. Our next discussion is around a series of games that I absolutely loved. They were highly critically acclaimed, and I wish they'd revisit them now. I probably never will. Maybe that's a thing of a bygone era. But that game series is the Strike series. That's right. Desert yes. Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike, Soviet Strike, Nuclear Strike. Oh, man. Nuclear. Nuclear. <laughs> we're going nuclear. Nuclear. Um, it's going to be awesome. I love that series. Gosh dang it, it's yeah. good. I played this recently-ish. And um, I love Desert Strike in particular. They're that, very same good. Way, same way. These great overhead tactical helicopter, go in, do the mission, get out kind of stuff. I feel, I feel like there's a lot of games that I enjoy basically because they, they kind of do this. You know, they, they kind of replicate yeah. the feeling of this, even modern games. So uh, come back for that. This is back when everyone loved EA and uh, oh, nobody yeah, hated them yet. Great. Yeah, they made good games. <laughs> People were big EA fans before EA shot themselves in their own feet. Yeah, before EA became EA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's next week, the Strike Series. Uh, Super Nintendo. I think I'm gonna NES try to. Uh, yeah, it's super. It's like the NES and the Super NES and those kind. Was it only on Sega Genesis? Uh, as well? Genesis and, as well. Yep. I don't think it ended up on. Might, it might not have been on that. NES. That might have been too early. Yeah, I think it was just SNES and Genesis. However, there may have been a version uh, on the Saturn, possibly. I right. can't remember. We're we're gonna dig in though. We're going deep, and uh, we're gonna play the I hell out of these again this week because they're great. Um, they're we're they're going, also we're hard. going deep and seeing how uh how socially sensitive these guys were uh to uh, all of our uh military uh, members who were yeah. oh, coming yeah. back from war and going oh yes well, I want to see yep uh <laughs> a yep. game based on war or or in the game just actually blowing up you know civilians and huts and stuff I don't know if yeah. any of that's Did, didn't well. you like didn't you face off off against am I remembering it wrong that we actually go there's like Saddam Hussein like I mean, there's a guy these. like him, but there's no. I don't think they use him. I don't think it's a direct reference, but it's obviously right. alluded to that it's you know like him and right. the desert desert strike in particular. That was because that came out right around the time of the Gulf War or the first Gulf War, right? And, uh, and that's my memory of yeah, it. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're probably right. Yeah, uh, I look forward to uh, fighting Gob uh, Gorb Gorbachev. Yep. No, that would be no. Nope, that's be too late that's different. That. Soviet maybe. Yeah. But Soviet nuclear, maybe. I don't remember. I don't remember who you're fighting. Just nuclear. Yeah, I don't think it... <laughs> you're fighting. You're fighting a, a Superman who's yeah. trying to uh, launch all of our, our nuclear missiles into the uh, into the sun. Oh, is that it? Sweet. So it's the it's yeah. Superman for the quest for peace. Right. Fantastic. That's right. That's Can't right. wait for that. Anyway, that's coming up soon right here on Play Retro. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you some cool names that joined our Patreon since we last talked. Woo. Patreon.com slash play retro is the place, and we'd like to welcome Chris Big Sandwich. Yep, that's his name. <laughs> Love that. I like Chris Big Sandwich. I, I wonder if too. he shares. That's an amazing sound or uh, name. Fet yep. 101 uh, and Matthew yes. Stein. That guy's just a normal yes. name, but these other two, total chuckleheads, and we love them all, one yep. and one and the same. Uh, so if you want to be like these guys and join us over at patreon.com slash play retro, please do. It helps pay for the show, keeps this thing on the air. And there are many benefits you get by doing so. So uh, walk not, you don't have to run, but walk on over to patreon.com slash play retro and sign up today. You'll never get any commercials. You'll you'll get pre-show content every week included on a feed and you'll get monthly benefits as well. There's no reason not to join. So go check it out. That's patreon.com slash play retro. Play retro show at gmail.com is our email address. We're play retro show on Twitter. And uh, frogpants.com slash play retro show for everything else. Hey, Brian, anything else you want to add to the uh, pile of uh, things here? Oh, uh, tell them when you, when, when you stream. We want to know when you stream. Oh, 
Absolutely. Uh, I stream almost every night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so be sure to tune in. It's always a good time. I'm usually playing like you would have saw a lot of Kirby this last week. And this next week, you're going to see a lot of strike series from me. Mm-hmm. 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 That's uh, twitch.tv forward slash Brian Dunaway. Oh, catch I wonder of the t- at the time if, if uh, I, m- I remember there was a big argument about, well, of course, everybody with Super Nintendo versus the Genesis were always fighting. But I remember there was a lot right, of fighting right. around the, the the strike series in terms of which console did the versions better. So right. we're going to probably look at that a little bit, too, and, you know, see if the SNES version really was as good as everybody said. Personally, I, I thought bet the, the audio was better, was nice. but we'll see. Yeah, but I'll bet the I'll bet the graphics were faster on the Genesis. I bet so. Because they had blast processing. Blast oh wait, processing. that was fake. That was bullshit. Never mind. Uh, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Between now and the next time we see you, please go play something retro. We'll see you next time. Nice potato samurai. <laughs>